So we're over by the hollow ponds, Leightonstone. And today, we're gonna go off on a bit of a kind of archeological adventure. But first, I'm gonna go to the Lakeside Diner for a bit of second breakfast. <laughs> Important when out on an expedition. A couple of these guys down here were really determined to get some of my egg and bacon baguette, which they're not allowed to have. But they kind of did a pincer movement on me, and at one point I thought they were going to try and make a dash for it and snatch it out of my hand. So today we're going in search of Leighton Stone's lost Lido. And wouldn't it be amazing to have a Lido on a day like today? It's been like 25 degrees at least. <laughs> A good, well, what a good week, week and a bit, which is amazing. It'd just be nice to be able to throw yourself into the water and no swimming in the hollow ponds. Now I have been looking for the Lido before actually. I went on a walk with my friend Andrew Stevens a couple of years ago. There's a post on my blog about it. But what I didn't realise is it is actually marked on the Ordnance Survey map. It's interesting, although it closed in the 80s, you can see here, look, here I am here by the hollow ponds. And it's over there which is basically somewhere over there. Whips Cross Lido, as the Leightonstone Lido was actually called, was built in 1905 and it was uh, fed by a natural spring. I think it had a reputation for having slightly muddy water. Taking a boat out on the Hollow Ponds has got to be one of my favorite things to do. Glorious, haven't done it this year. Maybe, maybe I'll do it this weekend. And, uh, I've made a whole video on the hollow ponds, as you would expect. And uh, I'll link to various things down below. Blog posts about the Lido, video about the, uh, video about the hollow ponds, some photos of the Lido, all sorts of stuff. So I think at first, I'm going to try and find the Lido the hard way, the way we did it before, by following the edge of the hollow ponds. Although there is a path that leads off the road on the far side that takes you down to the site. But that's cheating a bit, I think. So I would say, according to the map, the Lido, or the site of Leightonstone's lost Lido is just through that, this gap in the trees along this path here. Let's go and have a look. Basically, roughly where my thumb is, you can see where the path turns slightly. Let's move that nearer. I make that here, making this tuft of trees the site of the lost Lido. Let's see what we can find in the undergrowth. So, when I came with Andrew and his son a couple of years ago, we came through the undergrowth from over there. And this area is, uh, how should we say, has a number of uses at various times of the day, let's say, particularly I think at night time. And this area here, mostly what we found were condons and wet wipes, sadly, draped across the trees. We did find some bricks and some pipes and bits, but scattered around. So straight away, actually, look, what have we got here? Some metal work here. Uh, there is a bank. Bearing in mind the Lido closed in the 80s, so so this is where I came with Andrew. You see, there's a steep bank here. I guess that's the the side of the Lido there. You can see the telltale signs of nocturnal activity down there. And we have the wet wipes. Looking down, quite a steep bank into an overgrown indentation. I don't know if this is the Lido. I'm sure like lots of people are going to tell me I'm wrong or right. Quite mature growth has taken over though, hasn't it? Let's see, what do we want as evidence? We want some brickwork, don't we? So we have got this kind of pile of rubble here. It's got bits of concrete in it. Some glass. Still not convinced, although this does match up with the map. Look, there's lots of bricks here. See brick. Bricks here. 
there. Oh look, there's quite a lot actually in these trees here. Big lumps over there. There's something in here, can you see that? Poking out through the undergrowth. I think that's a that's a bit of metal. Should we go and have a look? Poke our way through the holly. This is like a bit of a bit of iron. It's attached to something. And again, this bank here, it's got bricks and concrete and stuff. Seems quite unnatural. Pulling the map, it's in there. But I suppose you had the associated buildings around the edge. There could be some in here. Again, another big lump of concrete, also there. When you look at how successful Lido's are now, it's difficult to fathom, isn't it, that then in the 80s they, they just thought it was, I don't know, a waste of space. I mean, it didn't even, they just filled it in. More wet wipes down there and through here. Do you think the people coming here to frolic in the evening have any idea of what it was before? That it was a swimming pool. Is that part of the allure? Does that make it a little bit more sort of enticing and exotic? I'm a live and let live kind of guy. I think go and do what you need to do with other consenting people. But take your rubbish home with you afterwards. <laughs> really, I don't see why the littering is a necessary part of it. Now this is the path that leads to Snaresbrook Road and this would have been, I suppose, the entrance to the swimming pool would have been, one end of it would have been here and basically ran in that direction. This is near uh, Snaresbrook Road now, just off the path and here we have a long length of metal pipe which could be from the old Lido. Yeah, I'm just going to go into here and see what we can find here. It's quite thick though, quite dense and prickly as well. More wet wipes here. No condoms so far. Improvement on a couple of years ago. Well, ah, here we go. Nice big concrete block. A couple of them here. to say, because of our proximity to the water, there are some quite epically sized rats that scuttle around in here. Just saw one leaping up <laughs> from the ivy. What would really seal the deal for me is some sort of tile, something that looks like it belongs at a swimming pool. Some coloured tiles <laughs> with, the, uh, with the depth of the water marked on them. A diving board, that kind of thing. So we've got a concrete post just jutting out of the ground here, away from the footpath. Mm, no markings. A great big bit of wood. It's reinforced with metal. And that sits on this bank here. Looking into it. Oh, muzzy. And that's a steep area cut, which was obviously the swimming pool. I mean, this must be it. This pipe here, look, it runs along what would be the outer wall of the swimming pool. That's the deep hollow down there. The outline of the pool. Here's the pipe running along the edge. I mean, it could be something else completely different. I could have it completely wrong, but it all does seem to line up, doesn't it? So, in we go for a swim. Oh, look, here you go. Look, there's more down here. Once you get... What have we got here? Look. Oh, it... not quite the kind of ceramic tiles I was after as compelling evidence, but nonetheless. Bit of old... Oh, look, that is... Bit of uh, reinforced glass, it was sort of wire mesh glass. There's more here, look. 
This is that kind of reinforced mesh glass you get sort of in public buildings, particularly doors. There's quite a lot of it here. Man, this really has got an Indiana Jones feel to it because I am getting munched by the mosquitoes. Absolutely eaten alive. And look here, a bit of ceramic pipe. I found these bits of ceramic here in the base of what I think would have been the base of the pool. And they're sort of curved, you can see like they would have been made part of a pipe, but you can see that they've got this bit of um, relief work on them. It's quite nice. Let's see if we can see it, clean it up and see it a bit. Return them to the water. Look, it's like a stem of corn motif. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Well, that's a really good find. I'm really happy with that and makes being absolutely munched by the mosquitoes worth it. I wonder what else we can find there as well. Have a little bit of a rummage here. And here, more lumps of concrete beneath this tree here. Okay, here we have something very tangible and a real bit of brick structure. This is obviously the top of it. It would have gone down into this bank. I don't know what it would have been, but it would have been part of the swimming pool. Part of the Lido, here it is, look. That's great. I'm satisfied now. Here we have another smoking gun. A pipe jutting out of the ground. That's what we were after. A real tangible remnant of Leightonstone's lost Lido. Some more brickwork here, some more big concrete blocks. Look, you see that guy? Look at the blood. You see that? It's my blood there. And that mosquito. Look at my arm. Look at the bites. This is what I go through to make my videos. I'm satisfied now that this is Leighton Stone's Lost Lido. Not an easy egg. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Smack my head on a tree. I've been eaten alive by mosquitoes. I had to tiptoe around wet wipes. There's been numerous guys scooting past. Um, but definitely worth it. And at the, at the end, look, a couple of, couple of condom wrappers, one there, and another one there. Leighton Stone's Lost Lido. Well, that turned out to be a really good little bit of kind of uh, archaeology. Edgeland archaeology. Looking for Leighton Stone's Lost Lido. Thanks for coming with me on the, uh, this little adventure. I might carry on walking, but I think that's a separate video. This is a self-contained little thing. And uh, I'll see you on the next walk, as ever.